Hi, my name is Vera Granikov, and I'm a research librarian with the Methods Development Team of the Quebec Spore Support Unit. One of our goals is to develop innovative methods and tools to support the work of patient-oriented research partners. This short video tutorial will go over the basics of reading a research article. It will introduce you to how most research articles are structured, what you can expect to find in each section, and propose some strategies for how you can read articles more efficiently and critically. The tutorial is meant for everyone, whether you're a patient, a clinician, a decision maker, or a researcher working with a diverse group of partners. The number of publications continues to grow. In approaching this ever-growing volume of articles, you can start by classifying them by type. So how do we tell them apart? Primary research publications describe original studies that use quantitative, qualitative, or mixed methods to collect and analyze research data. Primary studies are sometimes called field studies. In such studies, the research data must be original. It can also be called raw or primary and is collected specifically to address the research question and objectives. Right away, you see here what was done. It is described in the method section of the abstract. And you also see what was found. In contrast, secondary research publications describe secondary analysis. For example, a literature review will synthesize data extracted from existing primary research studies. In this example, from the title, you see that this is a literature review. Then in the methods section, you see that a search was carried out in a database and gray literature, which means publications other than published in scientific journals for example, organizational reports. There are other types of publications as well. In fact, they represent nearly half of what you find in PubMed Medline database. These will include editorials, program descriptions, commentary, practice guidelines. In this example, in the title, you see the word guideline. And then in the abstract, there's no mention of data collection or data analysis methods. So you can tell that this is the other type of publication. To recognize a research article, primary or secondary, from other types, you can look for format and characteristics unique to research. The way to present research in articles is standard. Once you become familiar with the conventional features, you will read and know what to anticipate, making it easier and faster. We can think of an article having three main parts. The front, includes title, authors, abstract, and keywords. The title should give you a good idea of what the article is about. It may include the word research or specific study design to help you identify if the article is reporting empirical research. For example, some titles will right away tell you that this is a systematic review or a case study. You can get a lot of information from a title and can quickly decide between the maybe articles and the definitely not relevant. As you see in these examples, we see this is a cross-sectional study and this one is a scoping review. The information about the authors will include names and their institutions. Some institutions are well respected. However, others may appear to be legitimate research institutions but are actually agenda-driven. In this article by Breton, you see who the authors are and their affiliations. Though you see that the majority of them are academic from known universities and public organizations. Also, take note of the journal in which it is published. Is it peer reviewed, for example? And the date of publication, as current research is more likely to be relevant to you. So here we see that this is a journal of primary care and community health. You can also look up the journal on the internet to check its credibility. The abstract is a summary of the article. Abstract helps us determine whether we should read the entire article or not, and are often available for free online. Most scientific journals have a structured abstract with headings like introduction, methods, results, and conclusions. 
an unstructured abstract has similar information, but without the headings. Non-research articles may also have an abstract, but it will not discuss the research process. So here you see the first abstract is structured with the headings that I mentioned, while this example is not. Keywords are terms that describe the article. They are provided by the authors or added by librarians or automatically. You can use these to find more related articles. Here we see an example. If you're interested in this article, by using these keywords in your search, you may find other relevant articles on your topic. Now the main body. It includes the introduction, methods, results, and discussion sections. The introduction describes the problem the authors are trying to solve. Sometimes the introduction will also include the background, or it can be in a separate section. Here you will find out what we know and what we do not know about this problem. The authors will review the literature and help you see what the problem is and why it is important. The section will usually conclude with specific research questions. These may be called research questions, research objectives, study aim, or research purpose. Usually the authors will be explicit and say, the research questions guiding this work are. These may be written as sentences or bullet points. You may also find a hypothesis, a statement predicting a relationship between variables. So here we see an example of what is known from the past 10 years. Here is another example. At first, the authors are telling us what is known in the literature. You can follow up on their references for more information, and then they will tell us what is still unknown. The method section describes what the authors did, the study design, when, where, and how they collected the data, ethics committee approval, and how the data was analyzed. The goal is to describe a study in a way that makes it possible to replicate it. However, the authors do not always provide detailed descriptions of what they did. In this example, you see that the authors describe what was collected, what were the variables, and the analysis method. The results present not what the results mean, but what they actually are. All the data in the study, along with figures, tables, and graphs. The first part of results will often describe the participants, for example, how many and who they were. Here, we see how many participants were involved and their characteristics. This is a good example where a table provides us a lot of information in a concise manner. The discussion includes the interpretation of the results and the implications of the study. For example, the authors may connect the current findings to earlier work discussed in the background section. They may also discuss unexpected findings and study limitations. In this discussion section, the authors place the results in context. Here, for example, we're told how the findings may inform future policy. The back section includes the conclusion, references, and funding information. The conclusion closes the article and provides overall conclusions and ideas for future research. It tells you what remains unknown and requires more study. Here in the article by Breton, she writes, our results provide a first look at physicians' participation in these centralized waiting lists in Canada. This analysis may be of interest for other provinces. Future research using a qualitative approach may help deepen our understanding of the factors influencing attachment of new patients through centralized waiting lists in primary care. The references are citations of sources from where the information came from. It is important to see the sources as they can help you to identify related studies. The funding information describes who paid for the study. The section is important to identify potential conflict of interest. It is important to know if the funding body could have had an interest and an influence on specific study results. In some articles, this information may be on the first page. 
So reading a single paper may take you a very long time at first, but be patient with yourself. The process will go much faster as you gain experience. Read the article many times. First skim, then reread carefully. In skimming, pay close attention to figures and tables as they're meant to convey a lot of information in a concise and efficient way. As you read, take notes. What is the problem that is being addressed? Why is the study needed? Then try to summarize the study in a couple of sentences. Taking notes will improve comprehension and recall. There are different approaches to reading scientific articles. Some say do not read the abstracts and others will say read title abstract and conclusions first. Try and see what works for you and be flexible as you may read differently every time depending on your reason for reading or information need. Finally, read critically. Do not assume that the authors are always right or wrong. You can ask yourself questions such as, do the results answer the research questions? Are they using appropriate methods? Were all solutions considered? What are the limitations of the study? What is the potential for error or bias? Was the study worth doing? And can the study be repeated? This will also become easier as you read more and become more familiar with research methods as well as a specific research topic. Here are the sources for information I used in this tutorial, which you can consult to learn more. Thank you.